choreographer, dancer, reality TV star, actress, mother. Andrea Kelly is all these things and more. But to many, she was one thing, R. Kelly's wife. Often shielded from the world by the shadows of her ex-husband's success, Drea Kelly withstood a 13-year marriage war torn with alleged abuse and sexual assault allegations. Now, 10 years removed from her union with the musical icon, she's ready to share her side of their twisted tale of love and alleged betrayal for the first time. But even more than that, she's ready to reveal a woman of purpose, passion, and service. Please welcome my friend, my sister, Andrea Kelly. <laughs> oh my God, first of all, you're gorgeous. Thank you, likewise, Your body's queen. on fleek. Okay, then. I just, every Thank time you. I come around you, I just get to say it oh, about, the, about how fine you are. I don't know now, honey, because that's all in all I mean, in all. I had to step up for you. Oh, okay, you know okay, <laughs> okay, okay, I'll take it. Andrea, I'm so glad you're here, um, and it's especially interesting sister circle with your story. Yeah. Um, what I want to know, the very first question that I want to know, and I think that all of our viewers want to know is, who is Drea Kelly before R. Kelly and now? What is the transition? Who is, what is the difference between these two women? You know, there really isn't a difference. She just got lost. Mm. And I think a lot of women, we get in relationships, we get married, we become the mother, and you lose yourself. The woman I was before him, strong, a little firecracker. I say mm -hmm. I'm little, but I'm lethal. Okay. Plays no games. <laughs> don't do it. I'm from the south side of mm -hmm. Chicago. Don't let this baby hair south fool you. South side? Yes. <laughs> don't let this baby hair fool you. She don't do the game. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, a survivor by mm -hmm. nature. Mm -hmm. uh, I often say that before I was even born, I was already in the ring with life or death. My mom threatened a miscarriage from her first trimester on. At three wow. months, they were like, you know, you should not have this baby. So I came into this world a fighter, and that's all I know how to do. Um, a theater brat, a bunhead, as mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. <laughs> danced before I could walk. My parents yes. said, you just stood up one day and just started dancing. And mm -hmm. it wasn't like that weird, like, oh, okay, like birthday party. Moves. They said you was in it. Soul Train was on, mm -hmm. and they went to commercial. They said, you put your hands up like poltergeist, and you were like, more. <laughs> and my dad said, we knew that you were going to be a dancer or a performer. Always have been outspoken. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm an Aquarius, too. You say left, I go right. I got to mm -hmm. see what's on the right side mm -hmm. of it. So... You get lost sometimes, and I think the woman that I was and the woman I became, it just wasn't a different person. It was just a lost Drea. Mm -hmm. Andrea, why is it important? I mean, it's been, I don't know, 10 years yes. since you have spoken out to anyone. 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 About your relationship with R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important to come out now? What is the basis of this stance? The basis of this stance is you have to love somebody enough to tell them enough. And I don't believe that my ex-husband has enough people in his life to be real with him, to be honest with him, who care about his healing, who care about these families' healings. And I feel like it's God's time. I was not strong enough. How can I be a voice for the voiceless when I don't even have my own? How can I be powerful for the powerless when I don't even have my own? Mm -hmm. So I had to wait until God said, okay, daughter, it is time. Mm -hmm. It's like being in boot camp. It's like being in training. I had to go through the trenches. I had to build myself up. I had to go through counseling. Yes. I had to even get to the point to accept and that healing. I was a, a victim of domestic mm. violence. That's a hard thing to look in the mirror yes, and say. Is. And then you are put on a platform where you're like, now I have to make a choice. Do I tell people? Do I not tell people? Because at the end of the day, my story is not about your curiosity. I'm not here to satisfy people's curiosity yeah. because then people want gory details. They want to know, well, what do you say? What was it like? What did you see? What did you do? Right. Now I'm satisfying your curiosity. I'm here about my journey. About your journey. It's about my journey. And speaking of this journey, um, and, and, and I believe that your eyes were the only eyes that saw the truth. Yes. Um, in your journey, what point did you realize something's not right? Something is wrong. When did you know, when did this Holy Spirit say, okay, Drea, we got to make a different direction. We got to go a different direction. You know, sad but true, it wasn't until, oh, I said I was going to cry. It's okay. We're ready. <laughs> it wasn't until the day that I wanted to commit suicide, tried to commit suicide, that it took so many years. 
But as a mother, when you get to a point that you're okay to leave your three babies without a mom, and death was better than spending another day with him, that's when it became reality for me. And what's sad is that most women don't even realize that the physical abuse is the aftermath of all the emotional, the psychological, everything you've already been through. The physical is just the aftermath of it. And you've been broken down so much. Your, your self-esteem has been chopped away so much that of course when it happens, you're like, that's the next step, why not? Uh, it was a harsh reality for me to realize that the first time that I was in an abusive relationship wasn't him. Mm. It was actually witnessing my grandfather, who was a Baptist preacher, beat my grandmother. And that's the first time I ever saw a man put his hands on a woman. Do you feel like generational curses then, that they are real? And, and when R. Kelly Robert, to us, talks about in his book, Solar Coaster, you know, him being molested and abused, do you think that these generational curses are, are, are what makes us, and, and well, not makes us, but they, they bleed into who we are as a people? You know, I don't like to use the word generational curse. Okay. I, I like to use the term learned behavior. Learned behavior. Because you can also unlearn what you've been taught. Yes, that's good. I could very well sit here today and say, because I was a victim of domestic violence, all men are bad, I'm, you know, I'm gonna victimize other people. You have a choice. And just like he went through abuse, you have the choice to get help, the but choice. you have to want it. That's not an excuse, it's not a pass. You don't get to say, oh, well, because this is what I was taught, this is what I was exposed to as a child, then I'm gonna go ahead and be, and victimize other people. You have to make a choice. And we reached out to R. Kelly's management, but we did not get a response. Either way, we'll have more uh, in our exclusive interview with Andrea Kelly, including how her three kids are coping when we come back. Stay with us.